Breaking news, Republicans lost a blockbuster case in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, and now they're going to the U.S. Supreme Court. Welcome back to Democracy Docket. I'm Mark Elias. And I'm Paige Moskowitz. Let's get started. We covered this ruling from the Pennsylvania Supreme Court earlier this week, so if you want an in-depth explanation of what happened, click the link above and watch that video. But essentially what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled is that mail-in voters who make a fatal mistake on their ballot do have the option of going to vote provisionally in person in order to have their vote count. But Mark, there's a major update in the case. Tell us what happened. Yeah, so the Republican National Committee and the Pennsylvania Republican Party have indicated that they are going to go to the U.S. Supreme Court and ask them to stay or pause this decision. Um, the first step to doing that is actually to go to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court and ask them to pause their decision. So essentially, as a procedural first step, the Republicans have to go to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, ask them to pause their decision. When that fails, they will then go to the U.S. Supreme Court. I expect that will be as early as Monday of next week. So please, if you are not already subscribed to Democracy Docket, make sure you sign up now. The link is in the show notes below. And do Republicans just want to pause this ruling or do they want the U.S. Supreme Court to fully overturn it? Well, of course they want it overturned, right? I mean, they want it, they want it overturned. They do not want people to be able to vote. That is their, that is like their default position. And they definitely do not want people in this instance to be able to vote provisionally if uh, there was a technical error, like a missing uh, uh, inner envelope sleeve that they can fix by, on election day by voting in person. They don't want them to be able to do that. And if they do vote provisionally, Paige, wait for it, the Republicans want their provisional ballots not to count. So the Republicans' fallback position is, well, sure, they can vote provisionally, but then you sort of throw the provisional ballots in the garbage. I mean, this is a Republican Party that is flailing about. I mean, they have lost case after case after case. They have lost cases in Georgia. They lost this the Supreme Court in a case uh, involving the MAGA Republican uh, rules. They lost this case in Pennsylvania. They've lost cases in North Carolina. They've lost cases in Michigan. They, they and their allies have lost cases, multiple cases in Nevada. I mean, they are losing uh, Wisconsin. They are losing all over the place. And so... You know, I think that they are getting a little testy here at the end uh, with the fact that they are losing. I think they're embarrassed. But again, make sure you stay up to date by uh, by uh, subscribing to Democracy Docket. Now, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court was interpreting its own state law over ballot errors and who could vote provisionally, right? So what is the Republicans' basis to take this case to the U.S. Supreme Court? Yeah, so let's be clear. They don't really have a good argument here for the reasons you said. This is This is the Pennsylvania Supreme Court interpreting Pennsylvania law and interpreting two provisions that are had to be read in harmony, right? One has to do with the requirement of, of uh, the inner secrecy envelope, the other, the right to cast a provisional ballot. So the state court did what state courts do, which is harmonize those two provisions. And in this case, it meant that they could vote provisionally and have their vote counted. This, by the way, was affirming a decision of a lower court that actually had come to the same conclusion. So this was a perfectly reasonable interpretation of state law, which is what state courts are charged with doing. Republicans, because they are in this box, because normally uh, the, the way it goes is that state courts are the final say on their state uh, laws, how they're interpreted. They are trying to shoehorn this into the, the never adopted uh, fringe legal theory, the independent state legislature theory. Now we've talked a lot about this and there'll be, we'll put a link to some of our past episodes about Moore v. Harper and ISL. There's been a lot of water under that bridge. Um, but suffice to say, they are claiming that, uh, that the, uh, that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court impermissibly distorted state law to such an extent that it violates the federal constitution. This is a preposterous claim. I mean, there is no there is no reasonable way to say that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court was not good in good faith interpreting state law in a way that is probably or not probably is the best reading of the law, but certainly is a reasonable reading of their law, even if you were to adopt, even if you were to adopt this sort of 
ISL type constraint on on state court uh, interpretation of state law. So I don't think this is going to succeed. I think that we need to understand this for what it is. It is an effort to sow chaos. It is an effort to sow misinformation. It is an effort to create a permission structure for Donald Trump to later complain. And, you know, they figure let's give it a roll to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, if you read the RNC's filing in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, which you can do on the democracy.gov website because we post every single filing and every single election case that we are tracking for free. So click the link above to take a look. But if you look at that filing, Republicans give two reasons why the Pennsylvania Supreme Court should pause its decision. One, so that they can appeal to SCOTUS. And two, they invoke the Purcell principle and say that it's just too close to the election to change the rules now. But as you point out, Republicans have been in courtrooms across the country for the past few weeks trying to change the rules of voting. Yeah. And also, this is not changing the rules of voting. I mean, let's be clear. The, this is not a case in which there is a statute that was struck down, right? That's a case that involves the changing the rules of voting, right? There's a law that says, you know, you cannot cast an absentee ballot without an excuse. And a lawsuit is filed saying you should have no excuse absentee voting because it violate, because it's required by the Constitution. That is, if, if successful, that is changing the law. Now, we can have a disagreement about whether Purcell ought to prevent that, but that's changing the law. Here, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court didn't strike down a statute. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court didn't undo anything. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court simply ruled that where these two statutes exist, what the proper interpretation is. So Purcell is simply not applicable here. The Republicans are grasping at straws because they are desperate that they are going to lose. They are desperate to show Donald Trump that they're putting up a fight to explain. I mean, Paige, they've been on quite a losing streak. Yeah, they've lost in major states across the country just this week. On Monday and Tuesday, you know, they lost in Michigan. They've lost in Nevada. They've lost in Georgia. They just lost in Virginia about a voter purge there. Alabama. Alabama as well. Republicans are on a losing streak, and now they're trying to get the biggest loss of all in the U.S. Supreme Court. So, Mark, explain to us the process. You said that they filed in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court today, and we might see a filing in the U.S. Supreme Court on Monday. Yeah, that's my guess. I mean, so they, they the way the Supreme Court process works is that before they can go to the U.S. Supreme Court, they have to first ask the, the lower court, in this case, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, to stay its own decision, essentially give the state Supreme Court an opportunity to block its own decision. Now, that's not going to happen. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court's not going to block its own decision, but that's a procedural step they have to take. And they have asked that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court take that step by Sunday. So we can assume that by the end of the weekend, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court will have denied the request to block their own ruling. That will then open the door for the, the RNC and the Pennsylvania Republican Party to file uh, an emergency petition uh, with the U.S. Supreme Court. That will, in the first instance, go to the circuit justice, which in this case is Justice Alito. Um, the way it is supposed to work, emphasis on supposed to, is that Justice Alito then refers that petition to the full Supreme Court so that the full Supreme Court can decide uh, what to do. And that will presumably play out over the course of next week. Um, probably, uh, I would imagine, uh, uh, be resolved before Election Day. And the good news, page is that on Tuesday, the day after I expect them to file, we are having a special event at Democracy Docket. I will be joined by Maryland Representative Jamie Raskin and Brian Tyler Cohn to preview what to expect in the post-election period, and it will almost certainly include Pennsylvania and everything that we've been talking about. Mark, in the past couple of elections, we have talked about how the U.S. Supreme Court has gotten involved in election cases via the shadow docket. Can you explain to us what the shadow docket is, and is this a lawsuit that could potentially be decided there? Yeah, so this is a shadow docket case, right? This will be a shadow docket case. And what that means is that you know, the Supreme Court, normal the normal process for the Supreme Court is you go to the Supreme Court, you ask them to review a case, and there is a lot of time that goes by. There's briefing about whether they should take the case. The Supreme the Court votes on whether to take the case. If they take the case, there's more briefing. There's then oral argument, as we're all familiar with, and then there is a written decision. And that, you know, those oral arguments start in uh, October, and the final decisions don't come until uh, the end of June, right? So, so... That's the normal Supreme Court process. 
there has always been a recognition that there are some cases that simply cannot wait on that time frame. You know, think about death penalty appeals, right? These are cases that have to move much quicker because of the exigency of the circumstances. And so when a case gets resolved on a sort of an emergency basis, on an emergency motion, we consider that to be the shadow docket. Why is it a shadow docket? Because it doesn't go through the normal process and it is much more opaque as to what the court is doing and why they're doing it. For example, the justices are not required or don't even by practice oftentimes explain why they will block a case, uh, a, a, an opinion below or affirm an opinion below. It's just, it's a much less transparent thing. And that has brought with it a lot of criticism and appropriately so. I've been critical of the amount of shadow docket cases that get resolved that frankly should not be resolved on the shadow docket. So that's what that is. I think the RNC's position will be this is an exigent circumstances. You have the election coming up in only a few days and we need a decision and there is not sufficient time. I think the, the, the rejoinder to that is sure the election's coming up, but this is a, this is not an exi this is not an exigent case. This is not there's no emergency here. This is the Pennsylvania Supreme Court interpreting Pennsylvania law consistent with that law. And therefore there simply is no reason for the for the United States Supreme Court to drop everything else and rush into this when it really has no business uh, wading into how the Pennsylvania Supreme Court reconciles two statutory provisions. Mark, amongst all of this, if you're a Pennsylvania voter, especially if you're a Pennsylvania mail-in voter, what should you be doing? Okay, so this is probably the most important thing. If you are a voter in Pennsylvania and you want to vote by mail, make sure that when you mark your ballot, you put it in the inner secrecy envelope. It looks kind of like a blank envelope because its only purpose is to keep your ballot secret from the people who open up the outer envelope. So you put it in that secrecy envelope, then you put that in the outer envelope, seal that. You have to sign that. Don't forget to sign. Please make sure to remember to sign. And you have to date it. You have to put the correct date on it. You should put the date that you completed the ballot. Okay. So, uh, you know, October, uh, you know, whatever date in October or early November that you complete the, the ballot, you should put that date and then you should return it. So that is how you properly vote. And the most important thing for everyone, whether you're in the state of Pennsylvania or you are in any of the other states um, and you are voting, is have a plan to vote. Okay, figure out how you want to vote. There are only a few more days left. So maybe many of you are thinking you're going to vote on Election Day. Maybe some of you are still holding an absentee ballot. Maybe you're in a state that has early voting. I want you right now to pause this. Don't, don't end it because we want you to watch to the end. But I want you to pause this and think to yourself, okay, how am I going to vote? What is my method? And then I want you to write that down, okay? And then when you're done with this video, I want you to research how you're going to effectuate that. What is the process by which you are going to effectuate voting? If it's mail-in, it is time to finish your ballot and put it in the mail or even better still, Put it in a drop box if you're in a state with a drop box. It is getting very close to election day, and we don't want your mail-in ballot to arrive too late. If you are voting in person in a state with early voting, I want you to research where the local closest early voting center is and what uh, uh, when it's open and what documentation, ID, or the like you may need to bring. If you're going to vote on election day, the location for election day may be different than the location for early votes. So I want you to look that up. And I want you to, again, have a plan to know what materials you need to bring. The most important thing, everyone, is don't forfeit your voice. Your vote is your voice. And I want to make sure that every voice is heard. Don't listen to the cynics. Don't listen to the people who want you to believe it, it won't matter. Don't listen to the people who say your vote won't count. There are people who are fighting to make sure your vote will count and that the elections will be certified accurately. But that can only be possible if everyone listening goes out and votes. Thank you for watching this episode of Democracy Docket. Please make sure you're subscribed to Democracy Docket's free daily and weekly newsletters, and we'll see you next time.